All right there, bud. I'm going to splash her down right at that dock for you, eh? You're going to want to make your way up to that lookout tower. Left your quad, boot around on, take it over to the cabin, and use her as needed. Just a two-beer run to the south. Okay, so 0900 two days from now, then. Hard yes. Anything goes squirrely, you can just contact us using that there satellite phone in the cabin. Right. Thanks, CJ. The weather reports looked good, so I'm sure I'll be fine. You may want to get yourself a little more firewood. You're going to find everything you need in the equipment shed. Oh, yeah, but besides that quad there at the tower, we have a couple of Rasputin stands at the cabin. Feel free to use them. Oh, and there's a permanent blind set up here and there, too. Sounds great. Thanks. I really appreciate everything. Hey, when a friend asks for help, you help. Tell you what, really looking forward to seeing what you bag. Just don't weigh down the plane too much, eh? Better patter, better get at her. Will do, thanks man. See you soon. I'm in the Yukon looking for some Canadian moose, and I've only got one full day to do it. I'm not allowed to hunt today because I've just flown in, but I still plan to scout and pick out some choice spots for tomorrow. I've had a busy week, so CJ and the guys have set me up pretty well so that I can hopefully get a lot done, even with the little time I have available this weekend. What's even better is that I was even able to meet with them earlier in the week, and they helped me to earmark some areas to explore for moose this time of year. They know the area better than anyone, so it's like having a head start. It's a great team over there at Rare Gem Outfitters, and I just can't say enough good things about them. I'm just going to get settled in at the cabin quickly, then it's straight back out to get a lay of the land in the areas they helped me to pick out earlier in the week. First thing is to make sure I can stay toasty up here, so I gather a little extra firewood nearby and get a small fire smoldering in the stove. Now to check some blinds, and I've brought one of the tripods with me too, just in case I find opportunity to set one up. The blinds the guys have sent me to seem to be smack in the middle of ideal moose country. The area has its share of salt licks, usually low-lying areas of stagnant, mineral-rich water. With the need of a large adult moose to consume 20 to 30 kilograms of vegetation each day, this entire region is a buffet. They're definitely hanging out here. Having found a bunch of sign, I decide to set up the tripod I've been lugging around all day. Snow flurries start to drift in and out, so I decide to head back in case visibility gets too dicey. As I near the cabin, the smoke I can see and smell assures me that the embers from this morning are still smoldering, and stoking the fire back to crackling will make for a cozy sleep. On my way back to the muskeg this morning, I have the warm sun to thank for the snow being gone. It could make tracking a little harder, but moose don't do well in the heat, so it should also ensure that they're keeping cool near the water. I decide to take the scenic route and watch the riverbanks too.
I think I just heard him pile up over there. Well, that's an unexpected start to the day. As I continue making my way to where I intend to hunt, some movement in my peripheral vision stops me in my tracks, and I tuck into a tree to see what's moving my way. The Mi'kmaq people refer to it as the spirit moose, and they're considered sacred animals. In the units I'm hunting, it's illegal to shoot them anyway, but I linger as long as I can and simply watch it sensing me until he decides to move off. After that welcome delay, I reached the southern edge of the muskeg just after 9 a.m. Before I even set up to do some calling, I already spot one of the place's first breakfast customers. Just need to get him broadside. Hopefully a call will get him moving around a bit. And he's piled up. <laughs> That's an interesting rack. He's a big muscular bull though. A little on the high side, but still on target. I'm happy with that. While heading across the muskeg to reach that promising area where I put up the tripod, I'm treated to more of the area's diverse and striking fauna. Although moose are the largest cervids, there are plenty of caribou here too. Of course, it's also a land where the buffalo roam or just lay around. So that's who's been commanding this area. I just need to sneak up into that tripod.
Man, he's a beauty. Just pick that head back up. There we go, there we go. Perfectly clean. What a beautiful bull. I've got one more blind that the guys suggested I try. There's a little afternoon left yet, so I plan on spending a little time here, then head back to the cabin. And as though they've got these bulls collared, one steps out proving again that the fellas at Rare Gem Outfitters know their territories. That's it, just keep coming and find a place to hang out. Those are thin shovels, but man, look at the shoulders on them. He's a big fella. High up on those lungs again, though. It's time to get back. I've got lots to do if I'm going to catch my plane in the morning, but on the way, Another surprise, in a spot the guys didn't tell me about. He looks like he's got really big brow tines on him. Oh, I think he just piled up there. Aldo Leopold, in a Sand County Almanac and sketches here and there, wrote, Wilderness areas are first of all a series of sanctuaries for the primitive arts of wilderness travel, especially canoeing and packing. I suppose some will wish to debate whether it is important to keep these primitive arts alive. I shall not debate it. Either you know it in your bones, or you are very, very old. <laughs> I know it in my bones. Something about places like this enriches me, recharges me, and helps me to understand my place in the world. The melancholy at the end of a trip like this is short-lived, because I have the jubilation in knowing I can return to assuage it. Mm -hmm. 